Hello and welcome to ATW University Safety Training. I'm JD Schmidt and I would like to help you create and maintain a safe working environment. At ATW we want every employee to be productive and successful and maintaining a safe workplace is a vital part of supporting these goals. Whether you work at one of the manufacturing facilities or a retail location, following the basic rules and taking proper precautions will help maintain a safe work environment for you and your fellow team members. Through ongoing training and supervision, you will be equipped with the knowledge to work safely and to identify potential hazards. Each of the following modules will provide an overview of a specific area of safety training along with key requirements to operate within regulation and or company policy. While these modules may be thorough, they cannot cover every possible scenario. So if you have any safety questions, please ask your manager or supervisor for directions. If you are asked to perform any operation that you have not been trained to do or feel it is unsafe, you should see your manager or supervisor immediately. Safety competency is the level you'll be trained to. Safety excellence is your personal choice. Thank you for taking safety seriously and participating in this program. And thank you for being a part of the ATW family. Let's get started. This lesson will cover Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE. Before we begin, remember, while these modules contain important information about required safety procedures, they cannot cover every possible scenario. If you are uncertain of a particular procedure or have a question concerning safety, please contact a manager or supervisor. PPE may include many areas of personal protection. In this lesson, we're going to cover four specific areas. They are eye protection, ear protection, hand and foot protection, and respiratory protection. And remember, some jobs or tasks may require additional PPE. Understanding each of these areas and strictly adhering to rules for each is required to operate safely within company policy. Let's take a closer look at each one. You may not think about it much, but more than 80% of the information your brain receives comes from your eyes. 80%! So protecting them is vitally important. Proper eye protection comes in many forms, starting with these basic glasses. For general work in a service shop or plant, ANSI certified eye protection like these must be worn at all times. If you wear prescription glasses, you must wear ANSI certified safety glasses designed specifically to fit over your prescription eyewear. Although you can purchase prescription safety glasses with proper side protection if desired, standard prescription glasses do not qualify as safety glasses. When working with grinding equipment, a full face shield is to be worn over standard safety glasses. Remember, a safety shield alone is unacceptable you must wear both safety glasses and a face shield. Welding arcs emit ultraviolet and infrared rays, which cause burns to the skin and eyes. When welding, proper clothing and an approved helmet are required. For some applications, specific types of eye protection are required. Anytime you start a new job task, verify with your supervisor that you have the appropriate PPE, including required eye protection. Here's a recap of some of the important safety requirements regarding eye protection. When working in a plant or shop, eye protection is always required. Generic safety glasses are not acceptable. Only ANSI certified safety glasses are allowed. When using a face shield, safety glasses must still be worn. Always use a proper helmet when welding. And do not start or continue working without proper eye protection.
Today, over 40 million people in the U.S. have some degree of hearing loss. And by age 65, one in three suffer from significant hearing loss. While hearing loss can occur from a single incident, in most cases, hearing loss takes place gradually as a result of long-term exposure to high noise levels. With a little effort, you can help change those numbers and more importantly, save your hearing. Anytime you're in a noise restricted area or you have to raise your voice to talk to coworkers, you must be using hearing protection. There are several types like these made of foam. They're easy to use. Simply roll them into a cone, insert the small end into your ear, hold the back slightly till they expand and you're ready to go. Earbuds are not hearing protection. Trying to cover up or drown out loud background noise with earbuds can prevent you from hearing instructions or warnings from others. And in the long term, can lead directly to hearing loss. Earbuds of any kind are not to be used at any time. Here's a recap of some of the important safety requirements regarding hearing protection. Hearing protection must be used in high noise areas, including anytime there's a warning sign and anytime you must raise your voice to talk with coworkers. Earbuds for music are not hearing protection and are never to be used. And where exposure to high noise levels is possible, do not start or continue working without proper hearing protection. You come to work with 10 and you want to leave with 10. To make sure that happens, you need to use the proper hand protection to match the task. There are generally four different types of hand protection. Protection from chemicals, extreme temperatures, impact punctures and cuts, and specific hazards. Chemical hazards can range from simple solvents or cleaning fluids that can cause irritation to corrosive fluids such as acid that can cause chemical burns on contact with the skin. The type of glove used can vary from simple latex gloves like these to thicker chemical resistant rubber gloves. Be sure to choose the correct type based on the potential chemical exposure for your specific task. For extreme temperatures, choose gloves appropriate to the conditions. This could be a simple cotton glove for operating a tractor outdoors in lower temperatures or sturdy leather gloves like these for welding. Anytime there's a potential for splinters, cuts, abrasions, or punctures, appropriate gloves must be worn. However, when operating machinery such as drills and saws or rotating equipment, gloves should not be worn since the equipment could catch the glove and pull your hand into the hazardous area. For some tasks, there are gloves designed to protect against a specific hazard. For example, powder coating requires this type of glove designed to dissipate an electrostatic charge to prevent shock and protect the hands. Other areas may require special PPE, including gloves. When starting a new task, be sure you're using the right equipment for the job. If you're not sure of the requirements, check with a supervisor before getting started. In addition to taking care of your hands, you must make sure you're properly protecting your feet. For most tasks, you must choose between two shoe types, work shoes, and safety shoes. Work shoes are fully enclosed sturdy shoes with firm toes and reinforced uppers. Sandals, open toe shoes, or shoes with a canvas or unreinforced upper are not acceptable. Safety shoes are divided into two categories depending on the potential hazard, work boots and waterproof boots. Work boots like these are to help protect your feet from heavy objects that could fall or roll on your feet and resist cuts and punctures. This type of boot must have a composite toe with slip resistant, puncture resistant soles and a defined heel. They must meet specific certification as defined in the safety handbook. Waterproof boots are for hazards that may include water, chemicals, or any other wet areas. These must be tall waterproof boots made of rubber, vinyl, or plastic with synthetic stitching. 
Anytime you're in a plant, a shop, operating equipment, or any other hazardous area, you must be wearing proper foot protection. Here's a recap of some of the important safety requirements regarding hand and foot protection. Always wear the proper type of glove for the job you are doing. Do not use gloves with rotating equipment where the glove could get caught in the equipment, such as saws and drills. Always wear work shoes or work boots depending on your type of work. Open shoes or canvas shoes are never acceptable in a shop or plant. When working in wet areas or exposed to chemicals, use waterproof or chemical resistant boots. And do not start or continue working without proper hand and foot protection. Respirators are used to protect you from breathing in hazardous chemicals. These chemicals can come in the form of dust, fumes, mists, and vapors. Dust are caused by sanding, crushing, and grinding operations. Fumes occur in high heat operations, such as welding. Mists are found near spraying, mixing, and cleaning operations. And vapors can be found in solvent cleaning and painting. While these chemicals are often invisible to the naked eye, they can become trapped in your respiratory system and cause irritation, short and long-term health problems, and even death. If you work in an area where these chemicals may be present, you must wear a respirator. And if you must wear a respirator, it must be certified per the safety manual, and you must have a medical clearance to wear one. The four most common respirator types are half mask, full face piece, disposable, and PAPR. The half mask covers the facial area from the bridge of the nose to just below the chin. Full face piece respirators cover the same facial area as the half mask, but feature a supplemental seal around the perimeter of the face and a protective see-through shield. A tight fitting piece is required to form a protective seal, forcing incoming air to pass through the filter media. If the seal is not tight, contaminated air could get past the filter. This means that facial hair, such as beards, mustaches, or even stubble, are not allowed when using a respirator. Prescription glasses can be used with a half mask, but are unsafe to use with a full face piece because the arms would prevent a tight seal. Disposable filtering respirators are designed to be used once and discarded. These are primarily intended to protect against particles, although some have additional filters for odors or vapors. These are not a substitute for half-face and full-face respirators, and they are not to be used for potential exposure to dangerous gases or vapors. Powered air purified respirators, or PAPR, utilize a battery-powered blower motor to pull air through a purifying element, then push the air into the full-face piece. PAPRs are useful in work environments where traditional full face piece respirators are not acceptable, such as a hot environment with high humidity, where the face shield on a traditional full face respirator may fog up rapidly, causing discomfort or an obstructed view. Here's a recap of some of the important safety requirements regarding respiratory protection. Anytime there is a potential exposure to dust, fumes, mist, or vapors, a respirator must be used. Choose a half mask, full face, disposable, or PAPR depending on the type of exposure. Do not use faulty or dirty equipment. When equipped with a filter, make sure it is clean. Do not use prescription glasses under a full face mask where the arms could prevent a proper seal. And. Do not start or continue working without proper respiratory equipment. Each year in the U.S., fires cause more than $14 billion worth of damage. Understanding how and when to use a fire extinguisher can help minimize the damage and save lives. 
There are four types of fire extinguishers. They are clearly labeled with the letters A, B, C, and D. A is for ordinary combustible materials like wood, paper, and cloth. B is for flammable liquids like oil, grease, tars, fuels, and gases like propane. Never use water on a grease or fuel fire. C is for energized electrical equipment. Never use water on an electrical fire. And D is for combustible metals like magnesium, titanium, or sodium. Fire extinguishers are well marked and easily accessible. You should look for and know the location of fire extinguishers near your work area. In the event of a fire, several decisions have to be made very quickly. The first question is fight or flee. You must very quickly decide if fighting the fire makes sense or fleeing to safety is the better choice. When in doubt, always take the flee option. Always be aware of the nearest exits to your work area to make your departure quick and safe. Do not fight the fire if the fire is bigger than a wastebasket. One extinguisher is not enough. Smoke is affecting your breathing. You cannot see a way out. Gas cylinders or chemicals are involved or your efforts are not reducing the size of the fire. If any of these situations exist, you must make your way quickly and safely out of the building. When exiting the building, be sure to take these important steps. Set off the fire alarm if there is one. Use the nearest exit. Move quickly, but do not run. Close doors behind you when no one else is inside. Do not delay your exit by collecting belongings. Immediately go to the evacuation point and check in. Do not leave the evacuation point and do not return to the building until told to do so by management. If the fire is small enough and you decide to fight it based on the previous criteria, remember these basic rules. Use the appropriate type of fire extinguisher for the fire. If you're uncertain of the material or cannot find the correct fire extinguisher, then follow the rules for departure. Remember, never use water on a fuel or grease fire or an electrical fire. If you have the right fire extinguisher type and you are capable of proceeding, follow these rules. Keep your back towards an unobstructed exit and use the pass technique. That is pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. Pull the pin. This unlocks the lever, making the fire extinguisher operational. Aim low. Point the nozzle or hose at the base of the fire. Generally, you must be within 10 feet of a fire to use a handheld extinguisher effectively. If it is too hot to get within 10 feet, then you must leave. Squeeze the lever to start the discharge. Release the lever to stop the discharge. Sweep from side to side, moving carefully toward the fire. Keep the extinguisher aimed at the base of the fire and sweep back and forth until the flames appear to be out. Watch the fire area. If the fire reignites, repeat the process. Always be sure to have a supervisor or manager inspect the fire site, even if you think you've extinguished the fire. Here's a recap of some of the important safety requirements regarding fire extinguisher use. When faced with a fire, the first question is fight or flee. If there is any doubt, flee to safety and call for help. Know where the closest exits are to your work area. Know where the fire extinguishers are located. To prevent confusion in the event of a fire, never block emergency exits or access to fire extinguishers. If a fire extinguisher is missing, notify a supervisor or manager immediately. If the fire is small enough and you choose to fight it, follow these requirements. Only use the correct fire extinguisher for the type of fire you are dealing with. Remember, never fight a grease or fuel fire or electrical fire with water. If there is any doubt, flee to safety. Use the pass method. Pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. Verify the fire is out and be sure a supervisor or manager always inspects the fire site. Those are just some of the rules regarding fire extinguishers and their use. If you have any questions pertaining to fire safety, ask a supervisor or manager for clarification or direction. And when it comes to fire, remember, if there's any doubt, get out.
great company that cares about their employees, you owe it to that company and to yourself to take pride in your work and pride in how you conduct yourself at work. Demonstrating proper workplace conduct can mean a lot of things and cover a lot of areas. This lesson will focus on teamwork, inappropriate behavior, proper vehicle operations, and grievances. There's an old saying that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. What that means is that when we work together as a team, the results can be far greater than each of us working as an individual. Of course, we all have our jobs with specific tasks that need to be completed. But if we see ourselves, not as individuals, but as part of a team, and look for ways to help our fellow team members, the results can be far greater than our individual efforts. A couple of examples may be, if you see someone struggling, step in and offer to help. If you see a new employee that looks confused or uncertain, offer some guidance. If someone is performing a task in an unsafe manner or violating company policy, take action. Offer to show them the correct way and help prevent an injury. Sometime in your past, someone reached out and offered you some help, some advice, or some guidance. As a member of the team, look for ways to pay that help forward. While having a good and friendly working environment is important, there are certain activities that are inappropriate and have no place at work. This lesson will focus on several high-profile examples of inappropriate behavior, including running, pranks, property destruction, disruptive behavior, cell phones and earbuds, tobacco use, and harassment. Running is prohibited. If there's a fire or other emergency, move quickly without running and get to safety. There are plenty of YouTube videos and Facebook posts depicting practical jokes or pranks, oftentimes with very funny results. These antics can lead to embarrassment, injury, or worse. There is no place for pranks or practical jokes at work. Do not participate, create, or instigate these activities. If you become aware of someone planning this activity, you should report it immediately. Willful destruction of company property or loss due to neglect or careless behavior is unacceptable. As an employee, it is your responsibility to properly take care of the company equipment you are authorized to use. Tractors, forklifts, trucks, welders, and of course, personal protection equipment, as well as all other company supplied equipment, is to be used properly, maintained properly, and stored properly. When you come to work, the company is counting on you to perform your job efficiently and to be productive. Interfering with the productivity of others by talking too much or interrupting others with non-work related activities is unacceptable. Arrive early so you're ready to work at your assigned start time. Focus on doing your job safely and with integrity and avoid keeping others from doing the same. Cell phones and earbuds are not to be used at any time. The only exception is when the use of a phone is directly required to perform your job. This may include checking with a supervisor, talking with a customer, or looking up specific information for the job at hand. Otherwise, stay off the phone and focused on your job. Smoking is prohibited inside all facilities. Certain outdoor areas may also be designated as non-smoking areas. The areas in which smoking is prohibited, indoors and outdoors, will be identified by no smoking signs. Designated smoking areas may be available. And even if it's not posted, there is no smoking within 25 feet of any entrance, windows, or ventilation equipment. Check with your supervisor for specific smoking rules. Sexual harassment, intimidation, racial comments, and inappropriate behavior will not be tolerated. No employee should feel uncomfortable coming to work. It is important that we work together and treat each other with respect. While these may seem obvious, these are just a few examples. There are times where you'll have to make a choice to do the right thing. If you think the action you're about to take may offend someone, hurt someone, or damage property, don't do it. The wrong choice can lead to disciplinary action, miss work, 
or even termination. Here's a recap of some of the important safety requirements regarding workplace conduct. You are part of a team. When possible, look for ways to help your coworkers. Do not run. Move quickly if required, but do not run. Do not instigate or participate in any type of pranks. Taking care of company property is everyone's responsibility. Use company equipment properly, clean it properly, and store it properly. Cell phones are not to be used unless it is directly required as part of your job. Earbuds are not to be used at any time. Smoking is only allowed in designated areas and never within 25 feet of doors, windows, and ventilation systems. Treat each other with respect. Harassment, intimidation, and disruptive behavior are not acceptable. From the smallest retail outlet to the largest manufacturing plant, there are almost always vehicles in motion. Tractors, forklifts, trucks, and other vehicles can cause extensive damage and bodily harm if not operated properly. Whenever you are operating a vehicle on company property, you are not to exceed 10 miles per hour. Operating at any speed above 10 miles per hour may put you, the vehicle, and others in danger. Please operate vehicles safely, remain aware of your surroundings, and stay below the speed limit. Cell phones and earbuds are never to be used while operating a vehicle on company property. Before you move any vehicle, be sure to check the circle of safety to be sure the area is completely clear of any people or obstructions. If equipped with seatbelts, they must always be worn while the vehicle is in motion. If at any time you're challenged by working conditions or personnel issues, there are steps you can take to change the situation. If you have concerns related to your working environment, including safety, the first step is to report the issue to your supervisor. If the issue is not resolved, you can report your concern to the head of safety for your division or your store manager. If something in your area is unsafe, you must report it, take action, don't wait until an injury occurs. If you feel you are the recipient of harassment, intimidation, or other personnel issues, please report the issues to your supervisor. You may report personnel issues to human resources. If someone is operating in an unsafe manner or violating company policy, you have an obligation to take action to stop the unsafe activity or report it immediately to someone who can. Grievances are taken seriously. If something is not right, tell someone so your concerns can be addressed and inappropriate personnel issues or working conditions can be corrected. Back injuries are one of the top five work-related injuries and one of the leading causes of missed work. Following some proper lifting techniques can help you avoid serious injury. When lifting is required, remember these simple rules. Keep your head up. Bend your knees and not your back. Hold the object close to your body with elbows in. Turn with your feet. Do not twist at the waist. If it's too heavy, ask for help. When applicable, use provided lifting tools, such as overhead cranes, forklifts, or dollies. And remember, before starting work in the morning or after any breaks, do some simple stretches to warm up your muscles. This can make a big difference. Back injuries can really affect your income and quality of life, both short-term and long-term. Don't take chances. Follow these simple rules and take care of your back.
Each year, more than 2,000 people are injured on the job by contact with electrical current. Nearly 10% don't survive the injury. Operating safely around electrical current is essential to avoiding serious injury or death. Stay safe when working around electricity by following these rules. Always wear appropriate PPE correctly. Use only equipment that has been approved by management. Verify all electrical cords are properly grounded before use. Immediately report any damaged cords to your supervisor. Never yank the cord to unplug something. Always grab the plug. Only authorized electricians can work on electrical equipment, connections, etc. And treat all electrical equipment as energized until lockout tagout procedures are completed. Speaking of lockout tagout, what exactly is it and how does it work? Lockout is the placement of a lockout device on an energy isolating device in accordance with an established procedure. Tagout is the placement of special tags on equipment energy isolating devices to warn employees not to operate it. This is an important procedure and must be followed to protect workers involved in the maintenance and servicing of equipment from the dangerous effects of hazardous energy. This is achieved by isolating, locking, and tagging out all hazardous energy sources. Lockout, tagout, or lotto must be used anytime a worker must remove or bypass a guard or safety device. A worker must place any part of their body where it could be caught by moving machinery. A worker performing service or maintenance may be exposed to any form of hazardous energy. Clearing jammed mechanisms. Unexpected startup or release of energy could cause injury. Cleaning or oiling machinery with moving parts. And repairing electrical circuits. Specialized hardware is used to properly execute the lockout procedure. This may include locks and tags identified to the worker halves for placing locks and tags, breaker clips for electrical lotto, valve covers for lotto of valves, and plug buckets for electrical plugs. When the work is complete, there are only two people allowed to remove the tag. The person doing the work that holds a key to their lock and has the authority to remove it, or a supervisor after obtaining permission from the worker who placed the lock. Lockout tagout prevents injury and saves lives. Do not sidestep this procedure. If you have any questions about any lotto procedure, check with your supervisor before you proceed.